welcome to our Reading Research Quarterly Live with the Author session. We have here today Elena Forzani. Welcome, Elena. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into your topic? Sure. Um, I guess I got into my topic um, back in 2011 um, when working on the ORCA project with Don Liu and Julie Coiro. Um, and I remember particularly one summer we were looking at students' responses from pilot year data. Um, and the ORCA project uh, was a project that created an assessment of students' online research and comprehension skills. And so it included four sort of skill areas, which were locating, evaluating, synthesizing, and communicating. And I was really interested in, particularly in students' evaluation responses. Um, so how did they evaluate the credibility of information on a website that we provided to them? Um, and I think what struck me was sort of this all or nothing thinking that many students displayed. And it seemed that they perhaps were even taught some of these ideas. And I just thought um, it was a really simplistic view of evaluation and was really, it got me really curious about what would, what would good evaluation look like? Um, and also how would we go about teaching students such a complex process? Um, and then I think, you know, a couple of years later, um, or, or even more recently with the 2016 presidential election, we have social media, many headlines about fake news. I think all of those things sort of underscore how important it is for people to be able to evaluate information for themselves and for their own needs, rather than simply relying on others, um, because other people may have purposes that are sort of at odds with students' own purposes. That sounds so important. I'm, you see me nodding along because <laughs> I'm totally with you on that. So tell us a little bit about your RRQ study. Um, what did you guys do and what did you find? Sure. So the RRQ study was part of my dissertation study. And in my dissertation study, I looked at specifically the evaluation component of the ORCA, the Online Research and Comprehension Assessment. Um, and I looked at how well students performed on Evaluate. And, and when I say evaluate, I specifically am referring to how credible they thought the information was. Um, and then I also looked at four factors um, and the extent to which those four factors contributed to students' ability to evaluate. And those four factors were students' prior topic knowledge, their gender, their socioeconomic status, and their offline reading ability. I found that students were not particularly skilled at evaluating. Um, not, not all that surprising given some other studies that we found. Although um, in some sort of follow-up qualitative work I'm doing, I'm finding that students actually have a lot of useful tools um, that I think we can build off of, but they're not necessarily using those tools well. Um, and then I also found that prior knowledge, gender, and offline reading ability did contribute to students' ability to evaluate. And interestingly, socioeconomic status did not. Um, and girls perform better than boys. So kind of similar to what we would see in an offline reading context with girls performing better than boys often, but different than what we typically see in science. Um, and these were science texts that students were reading online. Um, in science, we often see boys performing better than girls. Mm, that's super interesting. So now that you've done this study and you had those findings, what would you tell teachers about this work? I think the most important thing is to help students just develop critical habits of mind. Um, and we don't do a lot of evaluation of credibility um, just in general, not even just online, but in any spaces. So I think that's really important for students to understand that this is something we should do. Um, and to help them see themselves as, as um, somebody who is a judge and who is sort of this frontline judge. Nobody else is going to evaluate the information for them. They need to really take charge and evaluate it themselves. What would that look like in the classroom? Yeah, so I think um, one thing that can be really helpful is showing students two different um, things that both sort of can't necessarily be true. And that, I think, helps sort of prompt students to question, because if you know two things can't both be true, you start thinking, 
hmm, you know, what's, what's right, going something on? Something is wrong here. <laughs> yeah, so I always like to use the example that when my daughter was two, we took her to a, a Santa event. And as we were leaving the event, she, we saw another Santa at, you know, we drove by some oh, other thing where, <laughs> yeah, where she saw another Santa. And so she said something to us like, well, wait a minute, these, these Santas can't, uh, weren't the real Santa. Um, and so that sort of prompted her to be critical. Um, whereas I think initially at the event we were at, she just assumed, yes, that's Santa, um, but then when she saw this second Santa, it prompted her, you know, on her own to say, wait a minute, you know, if if both of these things can't be true, then something's going on here. Something must not be true. I think that links perfectly to my next question, which is, as a parent, what would you suggest that we take home about this study? Yeah, great question. Um, so I actually think that critical a critical habit of mind can be developed um, in young children, and we have some research that shows that. But I think it's so important for parents to show their children how to approach the world from a critical stance, where parents can sort of show their own thinking about, well, you know, I may not agree with this, let me think about both sides, I think can be really helpful for young children to see and to then sort of take on themselves, where they're not necessarily coming at the world from a place of automatically trusting everything they see and hear but rather questioning it for themselves. Yeah, and it seems like it might also be a good point that, you know, experts often have different opinions about things. And so even, you know, two really strong experts might have two very different takes on information. And so that seems like something to think about in terms of a critical lens. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's that's really important because, and I think that's that's exactly why readers do have to weigh information for themselves and ultimately decide, you know, what do I think based on the evidence and based on my own needs and purposes. Um, and sometimes, you know, things are not just black and white. Sometimes there aren't just two sides to an issue, right? Sometimes the story is a little more complex. Um, and I think that's really important too that readers understand that information isn't necessarily all credible or completely not credible. Um, you know, you can think of it along this continuum where there, there may be multiple sides to an issue. That's really, that's a really interesting sort of takeaway message. So it's not just evaluation of your sources, but it's evaluation of your information along this continuation continuum of being credible or not. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's a good way to think about information because it's it's not like information is ever all credible or all not credible, right? It's much more complex than that. And I think we need to teach students that that complexity and embrace that complexity rather than just simplifying it and saying, hey, you know, decide whether this website is credible, yes or no. All right. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to take away that continuum and that <laughs> idea that it's not just evaluation of the source, but also evaluation of the information. So what would you tell policymakers and principals based on your study? Um, good question. So I guess I'll, I would say with policymakers, um, I would love to see more critical evaluation skills and particularly evaluation skills with the Internet playing a more prominent role in curricular frameworks um, and also in assessment. So even with Common Core, we, we do see critical evaluation skills playing a role in those standards, but internet is not really explicitly mentioned. So there's a lot of mention of digital tools, but I think the internet really is a context that is incredibly important for students today. Um, adults use it in their working lives pretty much all the time. Um, and so I think we, we really need to prioritize that for students. I was going to say about principals, I think creating spaces in schools where students and teachers and principals and whoever else, even maybe parents and community members, can really engage in discussion about you know critical issues students are facing, um, where they sort of have to evaluate sources and evaluate information in real contexts that are relevant to their lives is just a great practice that schools can put into place to create those spaces for, um, you know, high level discussions that can help students. So yeah. where are you going next? What research needs to be done? And what's your next work in this area? 
Yeah, good question. So one thing I'm really interested in is sort of further developing the concept of evaluation and looking at what what does effective evaluation look like online and offline and, and what are the similarities and differences um, and also within and across different disciplines. So to what extent and in what ways does evaluation change in different disciplines in online and offline contexts? Um, and then I'm also curious about how do young children do that as well so that then we can build off of what young children do and link that to what um, maybe older or, or um, more um, expert people do in, in authentic context in their, in their everyday and working lives. Well, cool. It's kind of that continuum again. It's the continuum from the young child all the way up there to the expert. So, yes. yep. well, fantastic. And thank you again so much for being with us. And if this wet your whistle and you're interested in reading more of this work, the good news is that Wiley is providing this article for free via their collection to celebrate International Literacy Day. So, Elena, can you remind us one more time the title of this work? Sure. The title is How Well Can Students Evaluate Online Science Information? Contributions of Prior Knowledge, Gender, Socioeconomic Status, and Offline Reading Ability. Well, I can see that there's going to be lots of interesting conversations, so thank you again. Thank you so much for having me, Amanda.